Hello, I'm BJ from Hearns Hobbies. And I'm Brett. And we are going to talk about Velodrome. Velodrome part four, baby. That's right. And what do we have in front of us here? We're gonna soup up this bad boy, isn't it? It's been a bit of a progressive, what, modification process? Mm. Enhancement? Yes. So it did start life as a humble FSR model GT. It did. And it still is very much that. Mm. Um, we haven't taken any of the original parts out of it other than the body, mm -hmm. but we have added some stuff. Haven't we? Yeah. So a little bit out in the back here. Got some rockets. And we've got a beautifully painted body that was discussed in the last episode with Tony Gray. Yeah, Tony Gray did that for us. Mm. And now it's time to do some finer points of the body fitting. Yes. And I actually have got a couple of big gears to... Uh, actually took the standard pinion off already. Yes. We've got some big gears to put on. So I've got a 26 tooth pinion to put on the motor. Mm -hmm. And that is up from the factory 12. Now in the box, these come with two pinions, but they come with a 12 and a 14. So 12 is just for running about doing burnouts in the street and everything. Mm -hmm. and 14, so that's pretty massive, isn't it, this one? 14 for high speed runs. But we think, no, 14, pff, laugh at your 14. Patoy. Um, mock your 14. That's right. So we're going to jam a 26 in there. Okay, sounds uh, good. And we probably could have got bigger, but that's that's the biggest that Aramax do, so that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. We'll do a 26, and I've got to change the gearbox. Now this thing, like a lot of other sort of 1 7 scale speed machines or mm -hmm. bashers, they've got different size wheels, I think mainly for aesthetics. Yes. So they have a bigger, fatter rear wheel mm -hmm. and a slightly smaller wheel. Now, to make sure that the car does, in fact, drive equally, they change the gearbox ratio. That's right. Front to rear. So if that was the same front and rear, they'll have the same gear ratio. Yes. But because we've got the bigger tyres that were fitted on this, we yes. need to go and change this yep. to so a bigger gear, which matches the front. Yeah. So we're going to put the front gearbox into the rear. Yeah. So the rear gearbox ratio currently is a 1643, mm -hmm. so a 16 pinion 43 crown wheel. Yep. And the front is a 1843. So the front is 2.38 to 1, mm -hmm. is the internal ratio. 2.38, yep. And the rear is 2.68. Okay. Yeah, so I'm going to make it both 2.38, mm -hmm. and that will let us run equal size GRPs front and rear. Right. For maximum performance and handling. Yeah, because the GRPs are the tyres that work very well at the velodrome. They're very well, they're very good at high speed, they're mm -hmm. very good grip, and they smoke really, really well. Smoke. They smoke. Now, the standard pinion on this was, like I said before, a 12 tooth, mm -hmm. and the, the, the spur gear, so the big one on the centre diff, that's a 49, which right. is very much like a buggy. So that ratio there was 9.7 to 1. Okay. 9.7 to and 1. And we want some more speed type ratio. We want some more speed. So that's 9.71 rotations of the motor to yep. every one rotation of, of the tyre. Of the, of the spur gear. Of the spur. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So that's where we get the 9.7 to 1. Yep. Now going up to a 26 tooth pinion, mm -hmm. which is a massive change. Usually we only change one or two teeth at a time maximum on, in race conditions. That brings it down to 4.48. How good's that? Which is just about increasing it, um, what, oh. 100%. What's happened? So, so that is going to, yeah, increase our transmission speed mm -hmm. by, what, 100%. How good is that? It's going to be pretty because good. Because we want to speed it up. We want the high up. speed. Yep. So our overall gear ratio now is going to be... Um, oh, I didn't work it out actually, but yeah, our overall gear ratio is going to be like, well, yeah, down to four to one. It's going to be really good. That's what we want. High and speed. And with this, this is a little bit of theatrics at the back. Theatrics. Yep. So we're going to have the flames coming out of here with the rocket engines. Okay. But we will be running this on natural aspirated power of the electric motor to start with. Yeah. All right. So we've got a couple of things in mind. Now, I do need the body, or well, the chassis a bit, to work out where I have to cut. And you need to take off the rear end. Yeah. Okay, so I so might just the, quickly mark. So once the rear end comes off, it's going to be really hard for you to measure and mark the body. That's right. Now, we so, did have it lined up before the rockets were done, so it was fitted. Yes, yeah, so the before. body mount holes are right. So if we have that in the front. Like yep, so? Yeah, and I'll just, I might get a marker and help me with this. Because you've got to cut it around the rear diffuser, is that right? Or are you going to trim the diffuser back to fit inside the body? Uh, we'll see. I'll, ma I'll make it fit over the rocket mount first. 
Have we got a Sharpie around? Sharpie? Sharpie! Oh, not that sort of Sharpie. The wrinkly dog. <laughs> I've seen a few of them around. How about... Are you talking about a texter? I'm talking about, that's what Aussies call a texter. Texter! So it's going to be about that high. I can't find a texter. So it's going to go up to about that. Nan! Nan! Hang on, let me go to the basement. Alright, so I'm going to be chopping up quite a lot of this, I think. We do it here. Do it here. Okay. We'll just cut along this, this line with the lights. But if Brick can find me a Sharpie, that would be really Man, handy. Where is it? Have you found one? Uh, there must be heaps of them around. Oh, there she, you go. She was just doing scones. Oh, you got heaps. Well, I've got Thank one. you very much. I've got one. I'm not sure if it works. All right, let me just have a look see here. I'm just peeping I under. love the panda on the top. Yeah, how good is it? And it's a tribute to uh, Willy Panda Man Chang. How fast are you going to go? It's going to be the fastest panda ever. Oh, yeah, he's going to be flying this panda. Have you seen the other creations I've been working on? What other creations? Hey, the other creations, they're pretty cool. What other uh, Bellet creations? Oh yeah, there's four, isn't there? Yeah. Four cars in total are going to be running. And a camera car, and a yes. Comical, and an X-Max. And... So I've just marked a couple of bits. It's just going to, I'm just going to cut along the bottom of this, the light line across here first. And Can then I we'll start think about hacking opening. into it? Yeah, get into it. And then I'm going to be cleaning up the, what do you call these vertical sort of bits here? Vertical attributes. Vertical bits, is that what you call them? Yeah, why not? I'll clean those up as well and we'll get them screwed on. Now right, there's going to do be some a, chop little, chops. a little bit extra work in this uh, build because it didn't used to have rocket a rocket manifold on the back. Right, did it? right where I need to get into the gearbox. Oh really? Well I didn't used to. Where am I cutting from? Cut from, from cut away. Here. That's what Nan used to say. So I'll be a little bit. Do you stick your tongue out when you? Oh, like this? Yeah. No, well, that's not a, normally. I think that's the only way to cut an RC body, isn't Is it? it? Wow, that's a big screw. Trim. Maximum boost. It probably would be prudent actually to leave this off for the first couple of runs, but we won't. Will Someone it? asked us to leave it off. Didn't they? Yeah. <laughs> Until we've tested it and not crashed it and yeah but i say the first run should be the rocket run <laughs> you would say that that's very you trimming to the left while you're doing it <laughs> nah i think we should be right well we don't have to go out there gung-ho do we I'm we not, don't I'm but saying, we'll we'll like to i'm not saying we won't it'll be more fun but i'm saying that we probably shouldn't how good are these nine steps tools by the way let's see how do i do this I reckon I need a ruler. I need a ruler. A ruler? Can you find a ruler? I see that America could be about to have a new ruler. Are they? What well, is election time already? Uh, it's coming. Is no, it? No, it's always election time for them. Oh. You know, right, I no, would, you know I would never speak ill of anyone. Ill? Ill. Oh, Wouldn't just, you? It's just a circus, isn't it? It's great. It's the world's best TV show. Is it? Yeah. Do you enjoy that? Oh, I love it. I'd get off on it. What? Yeah. Now, I'm trying to get the reflections Head right so I see what I'm doing here. Refraction. Refraction. What? Here you go. Look at that. It is coming off, my friend. Is it? Now, I've got to take the... This thing is so brilliantly, you can just about drive it upside down. Look how low the center of gravity is. No? Like, if yeah. we put those big comical wheels on, you could drive this upside down. <laughs> no? Would you like to do that? Why not? Have I told you lately? Where's my two and a half? Master Joe is in the, in the lab working away. He's in the zone, isn't he? In the zone, in the office. In the office zone. I put him with the pug. <laughs> him and the pug. How, how do they get along together? Oh, they're great. Do they make similar sounds? Oh, he would never admit it. Oh. I think he loves a pug. <laughs> oh, 
Don't go all quiet. What do you mean? I'm concentrating. It makes a funny noise, doesn't it, Lexan, when you cut it? Well, this one does. It's very thick. Thick. It's, it's like a, it's it's like like a tear, corn chip. tearing sound, isn't it? That's like my toenail sometimes. Oh, no, no, you don't tell me that. What, what do you mean? You're giving me visuals. Visuals? I don't like your visuals. Oh, why not? They're very graphic. Well, that's the idea, isn't it? Is it? Well, it probably is for you. All right, so I've got the rear end really cut out now. As opposed to half cut out? Yeah, that's right. So from here, we'll probably still have to um, fine tune a bit, I think. This is yeah, it's pretty hard to cut, isn't it? Mega, mega thick, but mega thick is what we like. We don't want it flexing too much. No flex. That's right. No flexing. Let's trim this up here a little bit. Geez, this is really, really, this undercarriage, if you could call it that. What? The floor is really, really well engineered. The floor? The, the aero, bit? Yeah. All right, so that's pretty much done there. There we go. Actually, let's disconnect that. And we'll just get some vision over here. Vision. So this is what I've done in the back end now. Just cut it out. But I really do need the chassis here. So you're just undoing bits over there. I'm just undoing some bits. Yeah. So I really still need to get to here to be able to get it to fit properly. So just leave that there. I'm gonna pinch a bit of your space. Plug space it invader. In. Look at this, it's got this removable skid plan underneath. I'm gonna cut the gurney flap now. Yep. How much gurney flap are we gonna use? Probably very little, if any. I would say so. I think it's just there for a bit more uh, structural integrity. Integrity, no? What's, what integrity? No integrity here. Just structure. <laughs> That's right. Structured chaos. Now I am doing this for the first time. I'm not professing to be an absolute whiz at working on this car. You're not a whiz. No, you know sometimes oh. it can really take a little bit of working on a car to really get to know it. Well, this is a gurney flap what the engineers were thinking and what headspace they were in. Mm -hmm. I'm just contemplating whether I actually remove the whole rear clip, the rear module, mm -hmm. or whether I in fact... How many screws did it take to take off that ground effects? Um, about two, four, six screws. Okay. Look at that. Come off. Oh, the... you managed to get it all off in one, one go. I could still use that. To measure it up. Could you? Yeah, 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 yeah that'll be handy. That. Yeah, nice. So you could just run it like this. This isn't anything structural. Mm. No, but, it'll, is... but it'll probably be functional. Oh, it'll be very functional. Look at all the air now. Yeah. All the air is going to hit everything and make it all messy. But I think... Messy. I think I might hmm? take the whole box out. Uh, take the whole rear clip off or just do the try and do the gearbox out the back. Oh, you need to get it out the front anyway. You might as well take the whole clip off. Why? Don't need to get it out the front. Yeah, because you're going to have to change it. I just undo that grub screw. Yeah, but is that going to move forward enough for you to get it out? Yeah. Are you sure? Well, I'm not All right. sure. I'm not sure. <laughs> All right. If it was me, I'll take the whole clip off. Yeah, I think so. I feel that that's a more proper more way. More accessible. It'll give us some more space. Mm. Room to move. To stretch. No, that's in our safety box, mate. Oh, was it? Yeah. When did you put that in the safety box? <laughs> it's always been there. <laughs> Is it? It's always been there. You just oh, never whoops. look. Whoops. I'm trying to get this on there. Trying to be responsible. Get this on the overhead. What the hell size are they using here? What's that? Oh, that's good to say. So close, it's probably captured, isn't it? You probably don't need that anyway. No, it's not captured. Isn't it? Nah. I'm capturing it though. <laughs> Consider yourself captured, my friend. All right. 
I did have a favourite green pair of pliers. Oh, here it is. I do love these pliers. Oh, you got hand pliers? They're good, aren't they? They are good. I had those for a while. But you're missing them. I did. Look at that big brace. That is a proper chassis brace, no? Oh, it's solid. I, I actually thought they were hollow. I did not know it was solid. It's just a bit of a bit of tube, a bit of a rod tip on the side. So we'll get that out. I think I'll take this brace off here, and then we should be pretty much right. While I'm here, I might as well just take the wheels off. The wheels are going to have to come off soon. Do, 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 do. I'll cut from this end now, eh? How do you decide which end to cut? Well, with scissors, you get to a point where they'll start jamming up against things. Or the blades get stuck. The thing with that thick... And that's why I start going the other way. ...lexin or polycarbonate is that it bloody digs into your hand as you're trying mm. to cut it, no? Yeah, it doesn't have much give. Very different to the stuff they use for temp scale. Especially the modern stuff. It's ridiculous. You've seen all the internal whiskers that they've been putting on there. Whiskers? You know, there's little supports and structures and stuff. Oh, yeah. So, to gain structural integrity. Yeah. So they can save 20 grams on the body. Well, I guess it's all to do with trying to save body tucks as well, isn't it? Well, that is. But if they made the body thicker, then you wouldn't have to do it. Oh, but yeah, The yeah, body yeah, would yeah. be... Yeah, true. And because the body sits on the car... You know, obviously it's a high centre of gravity. Mm. And this is one tenth. So this is where, you know, th these are times where it sort of gets in the way. So where you change directions. Yeah. So yeah, one end gets stuck. But I mean, if I change now, the other end will do exactly the same. So I just persevere and just try to bend it. Now, some people would use electric tools. Oh, they're messy. Dust goes everywhere. I mean, it's... Handy, like they no, hurt. no, I mean for working on their car, like I'm working oh, on this? now. Oh, this? Oh, I thought you meant cutting. No, they get the old Makita 18 volt out. No? Yeah. But if you use good quality hand tools, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's these nine steps ones. It's a lot more feel, beautiful. isn't it? And look at it. It's a good quality kit, the FSR. Mm. So it's really not a chore to work on. And this has never been worked on before, this car. Alright, so I've got the edge of the gurney flap now. So that's going to go on here like this. Just going to you've, trim the top off it. You've done that before. Hey? You've done that before, haven't you? Done what? Cut stuff? Yeah. Yeah. You've done gurney flaps before. Yeah. Done all sorts of flaps. What? You're, what? You're Did a, something get stuck? Yeah. My my integrity. <laughs> what integrity? My integrity? What are you talking about? My integrity went missing again for a second. <laughs> Did it? Yep. Uh, don't worry. I'm sure you'll find it sooner or later. All right. So I'm okay. just chopping bits out. Gonna flip this car over now, Beach. Oh yeah. That's oh, right way up. Oh, you're almost losing something. It's a captured nut. Is it? It's not so captured anymore. Oh, yeah, baby. That is the rear cassette done. Why, the... why do you call it the cassette? I don't know, rear cassette, rear module. Because it just removes, it's like a clip. Mm. Rear, rear clip. Oh, look at that. It's got a carry handle on it. Oh, wow. I was going to put that on there and then stall. Can I please have this? Look at the mess you've made. I'm sorry. Can I move this? Do you want, can I put it in the whole frame or what? Yeah. Yeah, you take it all. Uh, I think the, the top camera might be a bit crooked. How's that? <laughs> oh, it could be. Alright. <laughs> here we go. It's alright. Let me pull this I'm in. a bit crooked too. Let's see what we've got over here. Look at that. So here, Beige, mm. you've got the gearbox. Mm. You've got your, your oil filled or fluid filled diff. Yep. And that's fully tunable with different thickness oils. Okay. And this is the gear we're going to change. This one here, the crown wheel, yes. and the one on this shaft here, the and pinion. And the pinion. Okay. 
So I'm going to change. So that's to get the ratio matching the front. Yeah. Okay. So with these gears here, out we go. So I'm going to continue cutting this gurney flappage. I'll let you. I wasn't going to, but I will. What? Let me? Yeah, let Give you. me permission? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, go on. Off you go. Cool. Mm -hmm. Slowly cutting bits off to make it a bit Look easier that. access. That is, that is a good gearbox retainer. Wow, well, that's thick. No, that, that just retains the integrity of the gearbox case and the D-block. You're using, you're using I word a lot, aren't you? Well, it's because I know I'm deficient, so I have to make up for it in language. Uh, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know it's true. Yeah, yeah. It's the easiest way to do this. I'll trim this off. Now this is probably an inappropriate use for these nine step snippers. What's that? Just oh, trying to get. Well, I've got to say, what are you this saying? This is mega thick. This gurney flap is not going to be flexing at all. No which flexing. Is, which is basically what you want. You don't want this moving too much. It's a very tall gurney flap. It must be like 15 mil tall. Really? I mean, we'll be trimming that heaps down. Heaps. Heaps. But I'll just cut it out full. To start with because we'll trim it down as we go yeah will we i don't know i'm not sure how you know which one's which what do you mean the, the gurney flap like when you're trimming it down one. how are you going to trim it down what do you mean just cut a section off the top of it yeah but how do you suppose that you're going to do that we want to leave at the track yeah while it's all mounted oh that's ludicrous no you just unscrew it and screw yeah. it. Yeah. Right. I'll let it's you. only going to be held on with uh, four screws. Yes. And once we screw it, I'll probably be a good idea for us to either super glue it or shoe goo the, um, the nuts in place so they're captured. Is that what you're reckon? Yeah, I reckon. Yeah. It'll make life a bit easier, wouldn't it? Well, not if we're going to take it off. Oh, well, if we do need to take it off. Oh, do you mean, yeah. So yeah, not, yeah. don't 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 fix the screws uh, on. Yeah, just yeah. the nuts. The nuts. I like nuts, me. You like nuts? They're good so, for you. It's one of the food groups. Is it? Yeah. What, I don't know. Do people still follow the food group? I, I got the feeling that's sort of old school now. It's sort of wrong. Don't you remember when Jeffrey, the giraffe, used to come and visit at the primary school? I don't know, I didn't never got a visit from Jeffrey. Really? Yeah. Who's Jeffrey the giraffe? The dentist. The dentist van at the school. No? Was there a thing like that? Yeah. No, I don't remember that oh, at all. Come on guys. No. You're making me feel old now. Jeffrey the giraffe. What do you mean? I'm older than you. Yeah, but I'm not that old. Oh. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> at least I had a uh, colour TV. Hey, we upgraded to a colour TV eventually. <laughs> I uh, remember the good old. What about RC cars with crystals? Oh yeah, we both remember those, right? It was like it was yesterday. It was yesterday, many years ago. I remember you go to the track and you have to get the uh, the frequency oh, peg off the even board. The velodrome. Yeah. It'd probably be glitching because it's quite a big. Uh, well, there's fencing all around it, isn't there? That yeah, doesn't help. It's going to give noise, and also the car goes away from you like a full. What? Be probably 250 meters, no? Mm. It's a 250 meter track. Here we go. Yeah, we've got a good now, haven't we? Gonna reveal to the world. What have you done? So I'm gonna take this, uh, take it as part as much as I need to. Mm. Got what I call a D block here. Can lift off the back. Mm and reveal to us the gearbox. Not my favorite grease in the world, but it's very industrial. Mm. Perfect for the application. And I suppose what we've got to take note of here is the shims. And I can see here that there's two on the crown wheel side. Mm. But you're going to change it anyway, aren't you? I'm going to change it, but I still yeah. like to know what was in there. Okay. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to be changing this, 
this lot over. 1643, look, it's even written on it. Oh, is it? 1643. Mm. So let's change that out now to the 18. Oh, look at that. What am I looking at? Chopped off the top section of the gurney flap, but there's still a size to do. So you can see how much work there is with a, a really thick body. Not as thick as some. Hmm? Well, it's probably the thickest out there, isn't it? Mill and a half. Oh! Oh! Look at it. <laughs> You've already broken it once this week. I have. Alright. Now, typical of a ready to run car, they've put a lot of Loctite on here, which is really, really good sign. There you go, there's our gurney flap. But it's also Loctited the outdrive on. So it's a little bit rough around here. Let's try to trim it off a bit. Look at that. Oh, just, this is such a well-made car, this FSR. I don't know if I've told you. Yeah, you may have mentioned it a few times. Look away, BJ, look away. Do you want to see your hammer? No. Nope. No, nah, just a light tap just to get this through the bearings. There you go. It's a bit rough, but we'll just clean it up a little bit with... Um... When it slides upside down on its lid? Oh, well, that will. That will nope. clean it up a bit. Make it quite, quite even, I think. I'll take the protective film off this now, I think. Which side do you think that's on? I'm going to leave that shim in there. Is that here? Oh, here we go. It's on this side. The microfilm. Yeah, we'll take it off, otherwise it'll just start looking ugly as it gets peeled off. So here we go. It's got a mini reveal, look at that. A mini reveal. That's the uh There we go. That's the name of the 53rd chapter in your book, isn't it? <laughs> no? Is that before or after the major reveal? Well, there's only one reveal. Oh, is there? Are yeah. you sure? For me. Oh, that's a bit harsh, isn't it? Now I want uh, a rough bit of sand and block there. Let's use that to clean this up. Now a bit. when you are doing this modification, I think it would be very prudent to apply fresh Loctite to your fittings. Mm. I'm gonna go ahead now, make sure there's no grease on anything. I'm gonna put a little puddle of Loctite. Puddle? A little puddle onto my little pit mat. These silicon pit mats are a godsend. The bee's knees. Aren't they? Master Joe approved. Oh, he likes using it? Loves it. He asked me where to get one. And did you just say you know a place? I uh, know a place. I know a place that knows a, go that knows a guy that has the best RC hardware in the world. That's still a bit off, but that'll do for the moment. It's just going to get scraped to the buggery anyway, isn't it? Oh, it's going to need to be like that. I reckon there'll be some viewers that don't know what I just said then. Buggery. Which would be quite interesting. Well, it can actually have a probably a very different meaning in... I guess it has different meanings in... In old English terms. Well, that's right. So, <laughs> no? So depending on your generation <laughs> and also country, you can have some different connotations as well, right? Not sure. Although I think it's pretty universal in Is it? a lot of probably Commonwealth countries, yeah. I'll understand the I feel that you're digging a hole here. Well it's not that deep yet. Shall I continue and make it even deeper? I would. Alright. Alright, so this is just cleaning it up a little bit. That is high speed approved. Is it? All right, so there's our gurney flap. So as you can see, 15 mil, that's pretty tall. It's just going to be sitting on the back. That's going to be major downforce. I reckon eventually we'll just have this like about five mil. You reckon? Yeah. Now what I actually have to do here is completely disassemble this differential. So this still needs a little bit of trimming to make it fit properly. So to completely disassemble this differential, I'm just going to clean it to make sure I'm not actually introducing any dirt and grime into it. No introductions from you? No. And I don't know what oil's in there, but if it needs a top up, I'll be going for whatever's on hand. 
I would say by the feels of it that it probably has 50 to 100 K oil in it. It's quite a thick differential. Did you ever really sharp knife over there before? Uh, I have a nine steps hobby knife, yes, but I can't guarantee the condition of the blade because I have oh, been using right. it. I have been using it probably inappropriately. Inappropriately. Well, that's no different to how you normally use stuff. I'm just going to score all this so it's a bit easier to. Well, I'm not an artesian like your good self. I'm a get it done kind of guy. Artesian? What are you talking about? You're a craftsman. Artesian well. You're a craftsman. Am I? Yeah. What makes you say that? I've seen you do stuff. <laughs> like what stuff? Oh, everything. <laughs> Anybody who shops at Loon is a craftsman. Where? Loon. Are you sure? Yeah. Anybody who's prepared to queue up an hour for a fine croissant is somebody with patience and a taste for the finer things in life. Did I tell you that time when I queued up and I was waiting there for ages and I saw people walk in there and just get their stuff that they ordered online? Did that upset you a little bit emotionally? Well, a little bit. You got left behind. <laughs> the younger generation <laughs> cutting the queue. That's uh, what happens when you get old, no? Yeah, but then it takes some of the magic out. Because I feel like if you don't feel a bit of pain, you don't appreciate the stuff as much. It comes too easy. <laughs> I want it easy. I want it fast and I want it now. <laughs> That's right. Hard, fast and easy. That's how I want it. <laughs> no? Oh, this younger generation. I don't know, mate. Instant gratification is called. Is it? Yeah. All right. So I think I've... It's funny, isn't it? I say right. that I like things like that, but I refuse to use power tools. <laughs> Because <laughs> I like to touch you, things and feel things. You've and... got some standards. Yeah. Look at that. Not, not a lot. That but... is a beefy differential. <sighs> All gears. It is very. I'm really quite familiar with. Um, there we go. H Gurney flap. HB. Gurney flaps all measured up. That's H how it's going to sit. HB racing and HR1 differentials. Because that's what 8 scale stuff we've been playing with the past couple of years. Yeah. And this differential is no second tier differential. And where's all those vertical bits I still need to cut? I need to cut that one. I've got that, these bits. The fluid in this dip is magnificent. Now just be careful because there's a bit of silicon oil going wayward. Why is it going wayward? Because I'm at the helm. Oh. Go ahead here and put this O-ring straight in there like that. Like that. What am I cutting now? Oh my gosh, this thing is just absolute, absolute darling to work on. Is it? Yeah, it's really nice. Now I am going to just apply the tiniest amount of grease well, to let this. Well, let me get a, a bit of a, get my little camera camera and have a look. this gasket. Yeah. That's just to ensure that I can reuse it. Now, if I clean this off, I'd like to see that there's a groove. Let's have a look. Can is there a groove? That, can you see that tiny little groove? Right. Now that is there to retain grease. Oh, okay. It's like a little well. Yeah, it's like a little well. So, yeah. I'm going to put grease in there, aren't I? Very good. And feed it through here. Don't forget to put your bearing on. Yep. Because it will not slip over the outdrive. You can put the drive pin in and we are off. Mm. We are ready to go. Now, ready to roll, I, eh? I didn't lose any diff fluid, but I am just going to put a tiny bit more in there. Because with all ready this. to runs, I just, I just don't think that they're as generous as they could be. Well, I guess there's time limitations too, aren't there? There's time limitations probably when they build them. I like to drop the gear in, mm. the diff, and line it up with the case so I can tell where the pin has to be. Get it all meshed. Mm. And then I'm going to put a little bit of, where is my nine steps diff oil? Nan! Nan! Where'd you put it? There we go. So trim that off. Oh, Nan. She's been using it in the cookies again. Dave. What's that? She's been using it in the cookies again. Why does she like using them in the cookies? There's nine steps silicon oil, because it keeps her regular. Oh, <laughs> is that it? Yep. I'll put a few drops of. Alright, so there's another. 
What do you call them? Vertical, vertical stabiliser. Vertical stabiliser. Yeah. No, somebody, on somebody, on somebody, did, somebody did have a name for it the other day. Did they? Yeah, and I forgot it. I'm not really into NASCAR, but it did have a name. So all NASCARs have these, don't they? Yeah. So do NASCAR still do mainly oval racing? There's some road circuits and stuff too, aren't they? I believe so. I don't know. I'm not really into it. Um, all right, so here's that one. This one's one you've already prepared earlier. My understanding is they're all the exact same car, just with different stickers. Oh, to keep them like all the same. Yeah. Look at that. This is a differential worth owning. Hmm. I had so you my. So just gotta screw uh, it back up. I had my reservations about this being a ready-to-run car. What are you but talking it's about? The the diff, the diff unit. So you're talking about restaurant reservations? No. Um. Hang because ready-to-run cars often get. I won't say second rate, but second tier construction methods and old, basically old parts and old, old technology. I think I lost a bit. No. No yeah, losing I need a bit. one of them, right? Oh, you can just make one. Oh, there it is. Got it? Yeah. Let I me can just make one. Bring it over here and let me put silicon oil over it. Yeah, now, when you're doing up diff casing, people, it's very important. Diff casing is diff housing doing out the crown gear to go up um, and do the screws up very evenly. Do the screws up evenly and make sure you do not under any circumstances get thick diff or any oil into the housing um, screw holes. Mm, right? you, said that, you said that multiple times, oh, yeah? Because I've, I've seen many people, so many people do it, Beach. Mm. They fill their diff up, they're sloppy with their oil, or they put too much in, they'll, up squeeze, in the hole. they'll squeeze it down, mm. oil will run into the hole, then they put a screw in, mm. and it just hydraulic locks and they strip the casing. Mm. You know? So just take your time, it's not worth damaging the diff and redoing everything because you've stripped the thread in your, your housing. Like I said, I like to get the mesh first, and I don't always get it right, but that's the advantage of not using power tools, is you've really got total control the whole way. Full feel. And just tighten it down a bit at a time. And I can just feel now, it's just taken up. It's just taken up. There's that one. Nice and even, all the way around. Look at that, beautiful dish. Lovely. Lovely dovely. I am really happy with that, but I am now going to get my cloth. Cloth? Not that I'm a man of the cloth, but I do love a good rag. And... What? Nothing. Nothing. Yeah, keep going. And torque it down. Again, evenly across the face of the gear. Just in small increments. Really nice threads, really good plastics in this car. Mm, it's one, lot, of these lot cars, of blast, isn't one of these cars that the more I touch it and, and work on it and stuff, the more I like it. Well, that's what happens when you get intimate with things, isn't it? Well, this is the problem with ready to run cars these days, in mm. my mind, is you just take it out of the box, box play with it, yeah. and you don't get that appreciation. Well, there's very little understanding because you don't know the insights. That's right. There we go. There's our diff unit. Okay, nice. So here's the old ones. Yep. 1643, 1643. Oh, they're That's nice. So they obviously marked those ones, and these ones here are unmarked, so this is the standard size. Yep. 1843, and it goes. Now I'm going to start off with the standard trims that they had in there, because I'm very sure that all these cars would get assembled the very same way out of the factory. Mm-hmm. So, giving it some new gear set. The new gear set also came with different shims, didn't it? Yeah, it comes with a whole packet of gaskets and shims. Yep. I'm just preemptively having a feel now. And to me, it does in fact feel a tiny bit loose but I have a feeling that it's actually going to tighten up as the casing goes together. So it's I, think it's a, I think it's a very good starting point. I 
and I am really happy with that mesh. I am, however, just going to put one more. So it still looks a little bit rough, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be perfect, this, because we know it's going to end up upside down anyway, right? So we'll take off all the mean, sharp edges it's not of this. Up upside down. Hey? What do you mean? Isn't it? The only thing that's going to end up upside down yeah. is, well, nothing. The X-Max. Is it going to try to climb the fence again? No. Nope. No more of that? No. I didn't have a good time last time, did it? I can't say for what other people are going to do with it. <laughs> i got a feeling that... It might just happen. I got a feeling it'll just happen anyway. Alright, so just round the edges so they don't... They don't cut. Oh... So I've just got a little, bit good? Of, got a little bit of float here. I've tightened it up a little bit. What do you reckon? I think... I think it is going to squeeze up when I like do it up, but... I'm happy with that, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I'm calling it, I'm calling it there. You're done. I'm calling it okay. Now it's a matter of reassembly. Oh. Once I finish rounding off all this, I might get the back end. Well, actually, I'll try mounting these on, eh? How's it going over there? Have you got a remage over there? Yes. I'll just clean this. If you want to do small holes, yeah. it's probably not the best. Oh, isn't if it? If it's already a hole. I have no holes, so should I, I start them off? Well, you can do it. I do it. It's just, it's just not the best. All right. Well, we've got a blade here anyway, I've so we'll use that. I've got to get one. I've got to get Nan to buy me a new one. All right. I'm going to move this over here. And these are those vertical stabilizers, which are going to sit here, I think. Is that that way? That one goes this way. So on that, this one goes on this side. And the first step I'm doing on the rebuild is actually doing up these gearbox housings tight and torquing them up to just to make sure that it's not crushing my gear mesh. Right. Where's this one going? This one goes here. Because if you don't put your gearbox case, cases nice together, you're not going to have a very good day ever. Ever? Well, it's just going to melt straight away. Oh. Uh -huh. I've got a feeling I might have to trim that to so get the gurney flap to fit. Oh. Properly. Stop it. What? Stop it. What's happening? Look at that. Just put one shim in there and I am super happy with that. Super happy. Uber happy. Can, can you hear that? Can you hear that mic? That's the backlash. Is it? And it's a feel thing. Hmm. I don't know. You just get well, a Well, you want just a feeling. bit, right? You don't probably want to be, about, you probably want you two don't want to be floppy. And I know two tenths is really hard to measure somebody, but... What do I do with that knife? Oh, you got it back there. Okay. Thank you. I can't be around knives. Uh-oh. Oh. No. Oh. All right. Good? I think so. I think... It's not that sharp, is it? Uh oh. Well, they agree. Oh no. Oh no, bro. Where's my dog bone? It's funny that they're called dog bones. They look like a dog bone, though. Do they? Yeah, bones that dogs like. Oh. I was going to say, I've never seen a dog with a leg like that. Have you? Might, might not be the bone from the leg. What might it be? From somewhere else. Right. It's what? No, it's no chicken foot. No. Or oh, duck. What are your thoughts of chicken feet? Chicken feet? Mm. Oh, they're good on chicken. You seen them at Yumcha? Chicken or the feet? 
or the feet of the chicken. Ah, oh, they don't do that. People don't eat that. They do. They don't. They do. You're telling porky pies. No, I make sure I order some all the time. No. Every time I go to Yumcha, you've got to have some feet, man. Don't believe you. You wouldn't want to eat my feet. Why would you want to eat a chicken's? Oh, chicken's foot's different to your foot, I reckon. Is it? Yeah. I don't know. I'll let you taste it later. You can tell me. Because I'm not eating a chicken foot. <laughs> it guaranteed, is it? Oh, look at that blade. It's lost, lost the tip now. Because <laughs> you're using it inappropriately. Oh, yeah, about. Pro Where's your we should start a new segment inappropriate ways to use tools <laughs> no a new series that's right is this the one? Oh yeah it is here we go got a little reamer i'm an rc racer and i use my hobby knife to drill holes in thick plastic there you go i use mine to remove and reinstall Eclipse. <laughs> <laughs> Which is not only uh, silly, but dangerous. <laughs> it's irresponsible. <laughs> but they're the best tool for it because you get a little tip in the side of it, you know what I mean? And it goes putting. Yeah, on the blunt side, you don't use a sharp side, but okay. there's still a sharp side very close to everything. Do you know what I mean? If you can't tell me you don't do that. I don't use a knife. I use a small screwdriver. No. Well, I don't a use small it. flat one. No, it's a knife. They have nine steps knives can do anything. Well, you live dangerously, don't you? No. Right, I so just, I'm just getting the pack of screws here. Like I said to you before, mate, I'm just here to get things done. Right. And if I need to use my nine steps hobby knife for that, I'll do it. Right. I see. All right, so we've got some three mil screws. We just make this big enough for the screw to go through. Can you believe that it's nearly done? Hmm, it's good, isn't it? Here I was daunted by a really big, and it's exactly just like a racing buggy. Hmm. No? Hmm. Really well engineered. Like I said, some ready to run cars are definitely not engineered that way. And no, they not can, beefy like this. Not only that, but with a, like off a competition car. Hmm. So it's completely, You've got to do twice as much work because it's just a hodgepodge of parts screwed together. This has absolutely been designed. Hodgepodge, it's not. Oh, Margin, Marlon introduced me to hodgepodge once. I forget what it is now. Do you remember? It's not hodgepodge, but it's something podge. Modgepodge. Something podge. Yeah, modgepodge. Use it for layouts, dioramas to seal up. Uh -oh. Yeah. Yeah, hodgepodge. No, hodgepodge. I said hodgepodge. It's modgepodge. No. You wouldn't know. You're no, not, you're I not, wouldn't you're know. You're not a train guy. <laughs> Marlon would know. He would. He should clarify. Is it hodgepodge or modgepodge? I think you're a hodgepodge. Hodgepodge or what? Everything. What are you trying to say? Oh, look at that. That is the finest rear end I've seen all day. Is it? Oh. You know a lot about rear ends too, don't you? Not sure what you mean. Hmm? I'm not sure what you mean. What do you mean? Well, I'm asking you what you mean. What do you mean? <laughs> You've dug a hole now and now you're scared. I'm not scared. You're scared. I'm just trying to divert the... Uh, just out with it, mate. Just Cause just, deflection. Just tell us what you really think. Oh, I couldn't do that. Yes, Your Honour. Need to do the beeps. All right, so I've got my two holes marked in there. Your what? Two holes. And then there's two holes aligned here, but to make sure that it fits perfectly, we'll mount up one and then we'll do the hole for the next one. I think that feels all right, doesn't it? Feels all right. All right, let's see if I can do this. Now, I slightly probably use too much grease, but better to have a little too much than not enough. No? Grease? Yeah. And I, I've greased it because I wiped it all off. Mm. And I've used lithium grease on there, mm. which is really nice. You can use lithium or copper grease. Mm. And in this application, I would have preferred to use copper grease, but I didn't mm. have any. Just because it's slightly more durable. Um, 
but yeah, this is definitely more workable. That's good. Really happy with that. Yeah. Like I said, I probably didn't absolutely need that last shim, but I'm glad I put it there. It is better with it. Is it? Yeah. Definitely. There we go. That is a rear end. Rear end. So you're just going to have to put it back, yeah? I'm going to have to offer it up to the chassis and go for it. Oh. There you go. Here's one I prepared earlier. Thanks, Nan. Let's see. Just going to clean That's this up. It's almost in. These OEM tires that come on this, they, you know, the, the, the GRPs, like they, they, I don't know, they wear like rubber, if you could say. They ball up. They ball up and stuff. This one here, like, turned to foam. Oh, what? Like, turned to foam. What do you mean, turned to foam? It was like. Like dust coming off it? Yeah, like dust. Oh. Foam. It was really weird. Maybe there's some foam in the mix. It's very, very strong. It was a very strong rubber. But yeah, like I said, it, it like turned to like foam. Right. Foam dust. Like a like a tin scale tire. Tin scale tire. You know, like inside your body. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas the GRPs, like the natural rubbers that we've been working with, they don't tend to to do like that. Yeah, right, lock so that in there. Look. Oops. I think we're almost there for the first hole in the body. Are we? I think so. Can't be sure. Anything with you? Almost ready to go. Just a little bit more. A little bit more. Ooh, ah, a little bit more. Just a little bit. Shouldn't see. Because I want the screw to be able to just pop through this hole easily. Inappropriate use of tools. Okay, we're almost there. <laughs> I'm just using the one and a half mil as a guide. Are you now? Yeah, just lining it up. Right. All right, so we got that. Let me get this ready. Looks all right. Is it good? I think so. How fast is it gonna go? Really fast. Are you gonna cut the back out more than that? I will. Because you've been, you've been advised under no uncertain terms. Well, uh, being advised doesn't mean I have to follow the advice. No. You should see what I did to the arcade. I just butchered it. <laughs> just took to it. Uh, it's got speed holes. Has it? Yeah. yeah. Speed holes. I thought I measured the... The first one I measured right. The second one I measured right. You didn't right. measure so good? When I did the second hole on the other side. Yeah. But apparently it wasn't right. Wow. It was different. Now it has character. Everything's better with character. Yes. Yes, 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 young BJ. Yeah, is that right? I think so. Oh. The other thing I've got to say about this FSR beach Yeah. Is the actual quality of the hardware. The, the screws. Yeah. Like, they're really nice. They're not just cheap, cheesy rubbish. Don't like cheese? No, but you know, some kits, they have really cheesy screws. They do. Not here. No. Mm -hmm. Get this in there. Go, okay, baby. How's it going? I think it's going all right. Do you like that reamer? Not particularly, but it's doing the job for the moment. I like it because it's like enough it's challenging enough to not make it easy. <laughs> what? But it's also good enough that you get it done and go, oh, that's nice. But it can still stab you and hurt you. Oh, for certain. And punish you. For certain. And go, oh, I don't like you. Oh, look, I got the, the arrow plate on. It's time to attach the bat wing. This is a piece of mo modern engineering, isn't it? What he did there. Hmm. That is certainly the case. Just using a knife to open up this hole a little bit. To move it across. Appropriate use of tools. That might be good, I think. 
I don't suppose you've got any CA there. CA, I think we've got some CA floating around. There's a couple of captured nuts here. Captured bits? And I'd like them to be more captured. Let's see what happens when they fall out. If I swear profusely. Swear? Alright, how are we going here? That's looking pretty good. I'm trying to speak very quietly so my captured screws don't fall out. What? My captured nuts. What? Shh. I'm just trying to be gentle. You know those scenes where, in a movie, where like everything's going to fall apart if you talk too loud? Shh. Shh. You know, like, oh, look at that! They're in like an igloo or something and it's... <laughs> Did I hear you just say igloo? Could be. Do you know what I mean? You've been in igloo before. Igloo? Oh! Did you just lose something? Did you hear that? Was that one of your captured nuts? Yeah. Mm. Mm. Oh, a Loctite will probably help this. What do you reckon? Have you got Loctite over there? Yeah. Oh. The gem of working. I cannot see what I'm doing here. Here's a handy little trick for new players. You oh. put, put the nut on there. That's a bit too much. And offer it up to the. You should just put a puddle. I've got no jabby thing. I don't need no jabby thing. Have you got something to wipe this off? Just lick it. Really? Can I use this? No. No? Of course you can. I heard you say no. It doesn't matter. No means yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, right. so it does. So it does. Right, case, rightly so. In this case. Rightly so. I was only joking. Yeah, I know. You always have my consent. Hey? You always have my consent. That is true. Just don't use flour as a safe word and then say the wrong flour. Have you been in that situation, have you? Yeah. <laughs> but he's saying the wrong flour. <laughs> flour, flour. Uh, I digress. Don't you? Here we go. This poor little car. Oh, look at that. We're going to have our first bit on. Have you? How's it looking? It's a bit hard to see because it's clear. But there it is. But isn't that the idea? There it is. Clarity. Oh, I've got dust stuck under it. There we go. I think I just blew the dust out of there and it ended up in my eye. No, that's the best. <laughs> Don't you love it? Love it. You know, like when you've just drilled like a screw hole or something, oh, <laughs> straight into your eye <laughs> every time. Oh, you've experienced it too. And then you go and put safety goggles on. <laughs> Actually, we've got some of them. What? Safety goggles. Have you? Yeah, what I for? found them just before. Oh, I didn't know you'd lost them. It's a bit weird. No. What do you need them for? Oh, nothing, because they're still in their packet. Well, it's good that you've got them. Yeah, that's right. Security. Yes, it's insurance. You never know when you need safety goggles. Usually after you've got something in your eye, I'd say, is the best time to not use them. What do you mean? Do you put them on after something's hit your eye? You then you go, oh, I should have been wearing safety glasses. That's right, better wear them now. Then you spend half an hour looking for them, walk around rubbing your eyes. Hmm, this blade's seen better days. Haven't we all? What do you like most about this project so far? It's just fun. Because things have been done to this that we don't even know what the outcome's going to be. I think we visualise what the outcome's going to be, but oh. we don't know for certain until it actually happens. I've dreamed about it. Have you? Yeah. Mate, you had the velodrome dreams. No? Mm. It's 
still remember years ago. One yeah. of my first velodrome meets. I've got 80 kilometers an hour. I was like, wow, that's like nothing now. It's just the buggy going down the straight. That's right. The track. <laughs> that's right. Now these cars are so fast now. And this thing, like how easy is it to go fast with this FSR? Effortless. You just take it out of the box, charge a battery. That's right. I think with the very standard pinion, so the slowest it could go with 6S. 6S? Like, yeah, the slowest it could go with 6S, like the, the 12 tooth pinion, mm. I think it was 80 something Ks, 80, 88 or 94. I put the bigger pinion on, mm. And I think straight away it was like 100, 170. Oh, really? That much difference? Yeah. Wow. So we've gone from a 14 to a 26. So it should go about, I did the calculations the other day. It's about 413 kilometers an hour. What? Really? Scale speed? No. Oh, what do you mean? Actual rollout? Yeah. <laughs> You're a madman. No, I didn't. I don't, I don't think we're going to get that. No. I mean, quite honestly. Often that's just theoretical, right? There's all this drag and other things involved. Don't bring me down. It's going up quite again. Body work takes a lot of effort, doesn't it? it takes a lot well, of that's time. Why, that's why you're doing it. Oh, is it? Yeah. Thank you. you got to lift that little flap here. Look at this. What do you got up. there? What is that? A little flap. Hey? Oh. Skid plate. Yeah. See, it's like, even, it's like it's bowed in the middle, so it's going to touch. Mm. How good's that? Mm. They've really thought about it, and it creates a low pressure system as well, at the back. Right. They've really, they've really, really thought about it, FSR. Yeah, nice, isn't it? All right, I think that hole's good. Good hole? Yep. Now Call it good. The second, second one I think is going to be good too. Now surprisingly few screws left. So we're just about done. Mm, you're the just full, about done. The full gearbox re-gear. Then I'm going to put the big, oh, big Bertha pinion on it. Big Bertha? Big Bertha, what do you reckon? Yeah, why not? I don't think I've got a transmitter here to fire it up. What do you think we oh, give it, in. What do you think if we give it a run up uh, Linda Street after? Yeah. Give those scooters a run for their money. For sure. <laughs> no. <laughs> How many scooters can you take out, do you reckon? All of them. Knock them all over. Yeah. I've been knocked over by a scooter. Have you? Probably because you're walking on the footpath. Probably. Oh, that's where scooters go. Yeah, we're not meant to be on the footpath, are we? Where's the wheels? I'll be right back. All right, let's put this back here. So I'm just doing the other side. All these vertical stabilizer things. Just trying to start the hole with a knife. A broken blade now, so it's a bit hard to get in the spot I want. Now you'll notice I did have some new rubber on it. New rubber? For photos. Did you? But I've got some slightly used rubber here to really get, look at that. What are you doing? Oof. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's, that's been lived, hasn't it? That's lived a life. That can go front right. That can go, that can go rear right. Is that the center? That can go front. That can go front right. And that can go rear left. I think I've got it in the centre, hopefully. That looks alright. I think that's looking alright. Is it? Mm. Are you confident? Not super, but I think it looks alright. I'm super! Thanks for asking. Is that what we're seeing? What you seeing? I don't know, some character owl of South Park. I forget now. There we go. There owl. Is. What have we got here? Ooh. 
nice serration on the wheel nuts too, I've got to say. Serration? Yeah. Serration of the nation. How low profile does it look mm. with the uh, body post off? Mm. No? Mm. It's really well designed, low really low, low center of gravity. Now it's just a matter of putting six more screws on and we should be done. Unless I've probably got this all wrong. What was the wood we were using before? Bucket it up. Bugger me. Alright, I think that might be good. I know it's good. Oh, we're almost there. Just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a big screw. Hmm? It's a big screw. Isn't it? Alright, that's in. That's in like Flynn. Go on there. Flynn's not in today. Hey? You Isn't said it? in like Flynn. Yeah. I said Flynn's not in today. Where is he? He comes in tomorrow. Oh, does he? Mm -hmm. Let's see if that's in the right spot. Now the rocket mount's actually quite an integral part of the car. The rocket what? Mount? Yeah, it goes through the body mount. It's only two screws holding the body mount on. Makes it really easy to work on. So that's a positive. I think that's good. How you going there, Beach? Such thick Lexan. What is Lexan? Well, Lexan is the trade name of polycarbonate, which was, was that another one of those things designed by DuPont? Yeah. Is DuPont 3M as well? Yeah. They invented Teflon, no? Mm -hmm. Velcro, mm -hmm. Lexan, mm -hmm. cheese. Post-it notes? Post-it notes. Did you say cheese? Whiteout. No, that was someone else, wasn't it? Was it? Yeah. Missed it out. You're talking liquid paper? Yeah. Oh, How good was that? Every kid had that, didn't they? Nobody uses it now, do they? And then there was a yellow one. Because we, we started get, using yellow paper. We get all different colours. Yeah, Depends and then the pink the ones and everything. Blue ones, all the colours of the rainbow. And then everyone had to have the full accessories. You had to have the thinner because it used to dry out. And then you had tape. What tape? Oh, the tapey thing. Yeah, that's right. No? That's probably more popular now, isn't it? I don't know. No, people just use phones. What? <laughs> Autocorrect. <laughs> no one writes anymore. No. I can't even spell duck, apparently, according to Siri. Duck! You always get a different word. I always get a different word. <laughs> I don't know how to spell duck. No duck for you. No. She always puts an F in there somewhere. I don't know. Which... Hey. Yeah. I don't hey. know how you spell duck with an F. Look. Look at this. Duck, duck. We have got four-wheel drive beige. Have you? Of the same gear ratio. That was a really easy conversion. How long do you think that took? I mean, we've been faffing around. Yeah, yeah. But probably took, what, an hour? Yeah, about that. I reckon if we really knuckle down and stop yapping, I could probably do it in like half, half an, hour. an hour. What do you reckon? I reckon. I reckon you're about right there. The motor mount. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Nice big beefy screws. Oh, do don't tempt later. me with a good time. Three there new screws. So we've got those. Vertical stabilizer bits on now. It Still used there. to have two motor screws, Beach. What do you mean? Yeah. Oh, I don't because? Think, I don't think I'm going to use... I'm going to have to lose a fan as well. So I'll just do those this time around. We'll do the other side later. Because once you're ready, I'm going to borrow the chassis again. Just so we can trim up the back. The chassis. I'm going to take the fan off. Because I have to move. I think I have to move the motor out so far. And really, for what we're doing, I don't think the fan's going to achieve anything, is it? Fan? What, what are your thoughts? You're probably right, there. It's not going to achieve anything. It's not going to keep this thing cool while it's... Imagine how much airflow is going to be inside this body whizzing around. Moving everywhere. The poor little fan's not going to do anything at a sustained speed of 150 kilometres an hour. Probably not. 
And I'd like to think that that's a really realistic number for this car. I reckon it is. Realistically. But whether we can get it to that speed and whether we can hold it there without crashing it is another thing. Well, that's right. That's where Euro sort of comes into it as well, right? And driving capability and setup and everything, right? Oh, I don't know if ability's got to do with it. It's just like... What do you mean? Just how confident you are. I don't think You just there's... send it. Um, yeah. No? No. Have I got that wrong? Well, I just beg to differ. I think there is a lot of skill in driving an RC car. And driving one at speed? Unplug this. I've got this wire tucked in here. But the speedy fan I'm going to leave intact. And that's mainly for the heat soak. Soak? What are you soaking? You're marinating it? In heat. I think that's right. See how big the gurney flap is? Holy moly. It's going to flip over backwards. Isn't it? I'll trim that off. Okay. What do you think? Where are you at at the moment? I'm at the cuttage. Oh, you got some two mils. I'll use those. I'm at the cuttage of... Oh, is that a two mil? Yes. What mill do you need? Well, I need a nut driver on the other end too. It's a bit nutty. Just to tighten these up. Did we lose the camera? Oh, did we? The front's going out. What does that mean? No, it's still operating. Did I hit a button, did I? There you go. We're back. Did everybody see that? Probably. Have you got that? There we go. What? This singer. I need this singer. Nice no singer for you. Thank you. Let's just tighten these up nice. Now I think it's paramount to put a little bit of, or a lot of Loctite on the pinion. I think so. You don't want that ever coming loose, do you? Not if you can help it, because it's going to, um, Oh, that's a bit unfortunate. Hmm? You've taken my favourite tool. Which one? The two mil. Oh. How's there you it, go. How's it looking, Chief? I reckon it looks all right. Tighten up all those screws there. We probably don't need any Loctite to... We won't be taking those off. If anything, we'll just do... Um, we'll try to capture the nuts for the, uh, the gurney flap. But I think it's going all right. There we go. These bits here. Super stiff. And I'll do the other one some other time. So you've got the idea or the gist of what's happening there. The gist. And then we'll just have a look at the, the back end. It's so all once you've it. done all your stuff, well, I I'll can't. stick this on. I'm trying to get the motor out. Oh. Do you want me to put that? Can't really see on the overhead. I'm gonna get the slide in the motor out. Mm -hmm. it's got might this, as well we'll just make some holes here, eh? It's got this cool little motor retainer plate. What do you call it? Well, the sliding motor mount. Yeah, hmm. I think it's really good. Makes doing work on the car really good, hmm. really straightforward, and more importantly, really reliable. Reliability is what you want. This poor little motor. Mm. And I say little, it's a big sucker from Hobby Wing, mm. 4274. 2000 KV. Mm. Wow, this is thick. Thick? This is thick. How thick? Thicker than. Now, because I've got such a rather large pinion. Uh, it's actually outside the design parameters that FSR give you. So I'm only going to use one motor screw. But because one should be fine, yeah? It's a sliding mount, so it's mm. only locking it in, you know, s sideways. Mm. Alright, let's see if I've got my 3mm hole big enough here. Just doing it by feel. By feel? 
find the tight spot. Yeah. No dirty jokes. No. Never are. What are you talking about? I don't know. I don't know. It's almost in. Look at that. All right. What are you looking at? Oh, it's done. It's as easy as that. You're we done. Get, can I put the standard pinion cover? Oh, I can. Does it? Oh, the cover. It even clears. It saves prying fingers. Knowing what pinion I'm running. No? Mm -hmm. Gotta be sneaky about these things, Beach. Sneaky? Yeah. What opinion have you got on? Oh, 21. Don't you remember those days of racing? Oh, when people are trying to work out what you're using. Yeah. When you had, when you were dumping and stuff. Oh, what have you got on? And you tell them to put it like a 38 on, and they go out and dump it three minute mark. <laughs> How'd you do that? <laughs> oh, I don't know, just a smooth driver. When really you've been running a 17. <laughs> nah. I wasn't like that, but it used to go on. Didn't it? Mate, we are good. We are gold. Gold? The only last thing I've got to do is actually put, I'm not gonna do it on camera, I've got to put, I've got to put fuel, oh, well, I'm going to put fuel tube over the shock shafts, mm -hmm. just to limit travel. Mm. So oh, since you got that there, let's get this back here. Uh, let's try and mount it It's a handy it little carry handle that, isn't it? Mm. Certainly is. All right, let's have a look. Where's the transmitter? I really want to fire it up. Yeah, I'm gonna fire it up now. How's it looking? Do I get it right? Sort of looks all right, doesn't it? Oh. It's a handful. It's a there handful. You go. So that's what we're at at the moment. Probably do a little bit more trimming. But I think it's all right. You're not going to trim up to there where they said? No, I will. I will. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'll leave that crossbar across there. I love it. Okay, that so you just, you know, like little, little holes. Probably trim that up a little bit higher too. So it doesn't flap and like cut through. Yeah. I think we're pretty good. You like that? I think it's looking all right. You're happy with that? Hmm. That is fantastic. It needs to be opened up a little bit more. So we've got this little airy fin on there, we've got the gurney flap to go on. Yep. We are good, huh? I think we're good. That is think fantastic. think we're good. Are we going to call that episode four done? Part I think four? so. Next time you see this, we'll be at the velodrome. You'll be going. Won't it? We're going to have a recap and then we'll have part six will be the full rebuild and how to reconstruct your FSR. That's it. That's it. <laughs> when you've either punched a hole through a wall or burnt it to the ground. No? Step by step. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, I am Brett from Hearns Hobbies. And I'm BJ. And thanks for watching us take care of our FSR Velodrome project. Mm -hmm.